This video is an overview of early quantum theory and several experiments before the Schrodinger equation and the rest of quantum theory, which really demonstrated the need for this type of quantization hypothesis to fix some failure of classical mechanics. The first was black body radiation, where the classical Rayleigh genes law predicted that the intensity of radiation emitted by a black body would uh, increase quadratically with the frequency, which led to what was called the ultraviolet catastrophe because it predicts that you have infinite radiation at infinite energies of photons, and that's a very poor prediction. And this was fixed by Planck uh, using a quantization hypothesis for the energies of the electrons that were emitting these photons. And this led to this constant H, which when Planck set to the value of what we now know as Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th joule seconds, he got the spectrum to agree with the experimentally observed values at different temperatures and got these types of curves that we see here at increasing temperature. And second was the photoelectric effect uh, figured out by Einstein, where you have UV light shining at a metal surface, and if the UV light is of sufficiently high frequency and high energy, the photons have high enough energy, then an electron is emitted with a certain kinetic energy T. And Einstein hypothesized the existence of photons, that there was kind of these packets or particles of light, and demonstrated that if you take that kind of a hypothesis, you correctly predict that um, the velocity of the electrons depends only on the frequency uh, or energy of those photons, and there is some minimum energy frequency. In the Rydberg formula, we talk about how the spectrum of the hydrogen atom, that is, um, specific wavelengths of light which are absorbed or emitted um, in its spectrum, follow a certain kind of pattern here. And these are three series in the ultraviolet, visible, and infrared regions that obey uh, an empirical rule that the frequency in wave numbers for these different spectral lines obeys a formula where you have the difference between the inverse square of two integers. These n1 and n2 were integers, and the picking n1 and n2 correctly predicts an individual peak here. And this Rydberg constant was empirically shown to be uh, 109,680 inverse centimeters. And so it was just this uh, type of quantization due to these integers here that they didn't really understand that showed that there was some quantization occurring in the transitions allowed for hydrogen. So Bohr solved some of this with his model for the hydrogen atom. He assumed that you had fixed orbits of some uh, length radius r and that there was some quantized angular momentum, that the angular momentum was some integer of h bar, Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. And using this idea, he derived that the radius of the lowest energy orbit was 0 0.529 angstroms, the Bohr radius, which was actually correct. It's the actual expectation value for the radius of an electron in a 1s orbital. He derived that the energies obey this expression where it's a minus a constant times the inverse square of some integer here, n, where the integers are the different energy levels. And thus, when you apply the Bohr frequency condition that the change in energy between two levels is equal to the energy of a photon, you can derive that the Rydberg constant should be this value, which gives you almost precisely the value originally empirically observed by Rydberg. So Bohr was really onto something with this Bohr model here. In wave, wave particle duality, we see that not only does light have both particle and wave-like properties, as we saw in the photoelectric effect, but matter also has particle and wave-like properties. So de Broglie had the hypothesis that the wavelength of a specific particle of matter was equal to Planck's constant divided by its momentum, or Planck's constant over m times v, mass times velocity. And this doesn't have any consequence for macroscopic objects, for everyday size objects moving at normal speeds, the wavelengths are far too small to be observed. But for things like electrons and subatomic particles, these wavelengths become very relevant. And using this type of uh, frequency idea, you can actually get back this same quantization condition that Bohr just imposed in his model of the hydrogen atom. 
And then finally, for this chapter, we looked at the uncertainty principle, which says that the uncertainty in the position of a particle times the uncertainty in its momentum is greater than or equal to h bar, Planck's constant, divided by 2 pi. And this, again, is not of consequence for everyday size objects. You can know the position of a person or a car to very, very great precision, and you can also know the momentum to very, very great precision because h is so small in terms of joules here. But what this means for very small objects is you have a trade-off between knowing the position and knowing the momentum. And as you know the position more and more precisely, that means you know about the momentum less and less. And as you know the momentum more and more precisely, you know the position less and less.